Good day, First World Travellers, and welcome back to my City Basic series, where I tell you everything you need to know about arriving in a new city. This time I'm in Shanghai in China, so stay tuned. Okay, I'm going to start off by telling you a way to get from Shanghai Pudong Airport into Shanghai. And it is quite possibly the most exciting moment of my life because I'm about to get on the Shanghai Maglev, which is the world's fastest train. Not just China's fastest train, it is the world's fastest train. It goes 268 miles an hour at top speed. Absolutely amazing. This is due to the name of it, the clues in the name, Maglev, magnetic levitation. So it's not actually connected to a track like a normal train. It's in effect levitating above the ground which is stunning let's go and get the maglev and i'll show you what it's all about okay i'm making mistakes um as i go on this video which makes actually doesn't make a change these ticket machines behind me as you come out of um arrivals don't use because they are just normal subway uh, tickets which you don't want let's go and see if we can find the maglev Right, I'm blaming the fact that I've had no sleep last night, so actually the maglev is right opposite. The signs in my defence do look very similar, they're both green. Let's get the maglev at last. So quite simply, you just get the ticket at the counter, it isn't an automated machine. You have to put your bags through a um, x-ray thing, like at the airport, and put your ticket in, bish bash bosh, you're on the train. Let's go. Well, that was a bit of a letdown. So it didn't go 268 miles an hour. It went 301 kilometers per hour. Don't ask me to convert it. But anyway, still, I can still say that I've been on the Shanghai Maglev. Point number two is the Shanghai Metro. Now I'm gonna make a bold statement and say that the Shanghai Metro, in my opinion, is one of the best in the world. Okay, it may not be the brightest or the cleanest on Singapore standards. However, there are some great things about the Shanghai Metro. It's one of the biggest in the world, so it has 14 lines and 364 stations, and it is always expanding. Secondly, you can get a public transportation card, which will make your journeys around Shanghai a lot cheaper. You can get these from banks, from convenience stores, and of course, at metro stations. Now, if you don't want to do that, like I'm doing, because I'm only in Shanghai for two days, you can get a single ticket. And the great thing about even getting a single ticket is it's so cheap, unbelievably cheap. Anything from four to six won for a trip of about 10 stations. Let's go and have a look at the ticket machine. I've got my ticket, so this was only 3 won. Fantastic, this is about 40 English pence and about 50 cents in US currency. The thing that you'll notice about subway stations in Shanghai is you have to put your bags through a x-ray machine, so just be prepared for that. And also don't be concerned with English because there are signs in English and all the announcements on the trains are also in well-spoken British English. We do of course have these very helpful maps my train's coming. I'm on the green line and go from Ying An Station to People's Square. Let's get the train. Next station. My third point is about taxis. So at the time of recording, Uber currently doesn't operate in Shanghai. So you will have to get a regular taxi. Now I mentioned the public transportation card. You can use this on taxis, but not all of them. Just a word of advice, if you do have to get a taxi in Shanghai, 
Don't forget you're in China, so more than likely the taxi driver will not speak English. Therefore, before you leave your hotel or hostel, just get one of the staff there to write down your destination in Mandarin, give that to the taxi driver, and you shouldn't have a problem. The next point is about the currency and ATMs. So the Chinese currency is the Chinese yuan, Y-U-A-N. This is a hundred Chinese yuan. In terms of exchange rates, at time of filming, this is August 2017, this is the equivalent of about 15 US dollars and about 19 Australian dollars. In terms of ATMs, you will not have a problem at all. So ATMs are everywhere. They do accept foreign cards. Wonderful. Point number five is about convenience. Yes, it's my fave, Famo Mart or Family Mart. Now, if you've been to Japan, you're going to be disappointed. So the Chinese Family Marts are fairly average, to be honest. They're very much like the ones in Taiwan. So the selection is nowhere near as good as the one in Japan. However, you do have Family Mart. They do have basics like a boiled egg, sandwiches. They do even have an exotic sandwich, which is basically a chocolate sandwich. Mental, you didn't see that in Japan. Point number six is about traffic. So one thing that strikes me about Shanghai is it's kind of a mix between Northeast Asia, places like Japan and Korea, where it's very much about cars, photobomb, and Southeast Asia. So as you can see behind me, there's scooters, motorbikes, and bicycles going by. You have to really watch out at pedestrian crossings. So especially as you go further out of the center of Shanghai, cars and bikes will still cross the pedestrian crossing even when the light is green, the little green man. So just watch out, watch your step, don't get run over. Point number seven is about VPN. So you may not know that in China, YouTube, Facebook and Instagram are banned. You cannot use them. Some people will say that Instagram does work, but for me, it doesn't. The same with Taiwan. To get around this, you can download a VPN before you get to China. I use this one, which works a treat. It basically free connection for about a day, I think it was. And then you have to pay a small amount like two dollars for 30 days access now you may hear about other travel youtubers like fun for louis he apparently used a vpn that had a code that he got from somewhere i don't know but like i say there are loads of vpns you can use in order to access these websites just don't get caught doing anything dodgy my eighth point is about accommodation so hostels in shanghai are fantastic at least the one i'm staying at is it's called Le tour hostel it's close to the french quarter hence the name it costs about $15 per night, US dollars, so it's remarkably cheaper than places like Korea and Japan. Let's go and have a look. So this is actually a converted towel factory. Amazing. So bathroom. Long fog. And let me show you the room. So it's a typical hostel. You've got a security key card thingy bulb to get in the door. There's my bed down there. Excuse the mess. And you do have lockers as well, of course. So pretty standard. I've got no complaints about this hostel. And the ninth and final point is the very important subject of getting into China in the first place. You can use the Chinese transit visa. You don't have to pay for a full visa. I have done a separate video about this. So after this video, why don't you check that one out? It's in the description below. And also up there or there somewhere, I don't know. So there are your Shanghai basics. Don't forget if you've enjoyed this video and found it useful, don't forget to hit that subscribe button down the bottom. Also check out my playlist. There's a city basics playlist. Hong Kong, Korea, Taiwan, and don't get me started on Japan because there's tons of videos about how to get around Japan. On that note, I'll catch you later.